As Dustin said, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been building companies for over 25 years. Uh, we've got some companies that, uh, that many of you uh, may know about, Constant Contact, uh, a very, very successful email marketing software company, uh, a company I'll re refer to later with a product called Think Through Math, a very scalable math remediation tool. For those of you that are local, Boston Duck Tours, an iconic company uh, that actually, as we win championships, the World Series, uh, Super Bowl, we bring, um, uh, we bring the winning team in a parade throughout the city of Boston, and hopefully we'll add a, a, a Stanley Cup um, sometime in, in the near future. I'd like to talk to you not just about growing companies, but really also about growing kids. And I know for some that's, you know, it's, it's just too businessy to think this way. Um, and it's really about investing. Now, if I had a 10-year-old, which I do, in fact, this one on the right, uh, bottom right, uh, wearing the USA hat, and I wanted her to be a scholarship hockey player at one of the, you know, great Boston area schools, and I'm going to start her in hockey now and you've got a daughter, and she's 10, and you've had her on skates since she was three. Which one of them do you think has a chance of getting a D1 scholarship? The, the answer is obvious, right? Your kid is comfortable on skates. Your kid has all the stick skills, you know, forwards and backwards faster than I can skate, the, all the coaching, the elevated levels as, as you progress, uh, you know, my kid might have one advantage, probably less concussions, and uh, maybe someday I can get her a job in the Bruins front, front office. But there's no way she's going to get that scholarship. I have friends that are Olympians, you know, played in the NHL and all that, and they said there is, there's, to them, there's zero chance you could start that late and catch up. So you think about how much, how much we invest. Now, we invest uh, in Massachusetts early childhood education about $3,000 a student and we invest $12,000 a student for high school students. And you say to yourself, okay, we all know kids are sponges in these early years. Kids do have logic skills. Kids can learn math. Kids can learn a, a lot of things in, in, in reading. And yet, in Massachusetts, where we argue, hey, we're the best in the country, aren't we doing so, so great, we've got 63% of the students are, are, are proficient in third grade reading. But 37% aren't. So they are already way behind. And these, by the way, are not the highest standards in the world either. So already, these kids are handicapped. Now, the odds are slightly better than that kid that you really want to get a D1 hockey scholarship, but not a lot. A lot of these kids will end up dropping out of high school. 75% of these kids are going to struggle throughout high school. And this middle statistic blows me away. It's going to cost us an extra $350,000 if that kid drops out of high school. 75% of crimes are committed by high school dropouts. And the way we look to getting back to business for a second, when we invest in an early stage company, we're constantly thinking, OK, how much does this company need to achieve milestones? We need to build an entire management team. We sure as heck better finish the product so we have something to be out there selling to the world. We've got to establish all the processes for growth. That's very, very important so that you don't get to a situation that it's just, you know, you just haven't set the right foundation and that you're growing, but it's very, very difficult to take the company to the next stage. You know, all the competitive analysis. So you have to think through all of that, and you have to, as we say, uh, Green, uh, Wayne Gretzky, the great hockey player, was the one who coined this. He's great because he doesn't skate to where the puck is. He skates to where the puck is going to be. He anticipates it. He knows where it needs to go. Well, we know where our children need to go. It's no secret. So why don't we make these kinds of investments? Now, to me, I tend to look at everything initially just through an ethical lens. And to me, it just seems like it's the right thing to do. But let's look at it a little bit differently. Um, you know, the, the, the health effects are extraordinary. It also, uh, by the way, if you perform better in school, it, it has uh, a, a decrease in obesity, as well as some uh, at-risk behaviors. 
the ABCs that they talk about, the attendance goes up, the behavioral issues within a school uh, go down, C curriculum, which is essentially grades, grades improve uh, tremendously. Chicago CPC did a, did a study and they had almost an 11 to one return on investment. Now, when we look at potential portfolio companies, as soon as we hit a, a belief that we can get a company to 10X, that's when we get interested. And I've had 100X returns in companies. Think about that. And those are the entrepreneurs that just kill it. They create you know, uh, hundreds if not thousands of jobs. They, you know, very, very scalable technologies. And they're, the, you know, they're the ones that are going to employ a lot of people. Those employees are going to pay a lot of taxes. So it's a really, really good thing to make sure that we're trying to nurture all of these students as early as possible, making it, think of it as an investment. You know, if you can't get there just through the ethical considerations. So if the goal is to take all these bright, fertile minds and move them to the jobs, and especially some of the jobs of the future, um, you know, one of the things that constantly comes up is STEM, right? And I actually like to add an A. Uh, in fact, I was with a bunch of artists yesterday. STEAM, add the arts into that, so then you've got the creative side as well as all the logic and the analytical side, and that is the intersection where there's a tremendous amount of innovation. You know, entrepreneurs tend to have both sides, by the way, and with an underpinning of just extraordinary resilience and extraordinary drive. Uh, what, what bothers me a bit is that when you look at the federal level, the investing, uh, only 20% of it is in pre-bachelor's degrees for STEM education. And that doesn't make a lot of sense to me because half of the jobs do not require a four-year college degrees that are in STEM. There's tremendous numbers of jobs in manufacturing and in healthcare and in other areas that don't require uh, uh, a BS but certainly are considered STEM jobs. Again, anticipating what are the needs of the future, let's look at that, let's educate kids so that, you know, so that they always have off-ramps to jobs. And most of you know there's a tremendous number of unfilled jobs right now in Massachusetts, and there's also significant unemployment, uh, over 6%. Well, why don't, you know, if those people were trained for these jobs, we could cut the unemployment rate in half. So it seems very logical to me to be pointing students in this direction, whether it's high school, technical schools, vocational schools, uh, uh, community colleges, state colleges and universities are, are all gonna be very, very important. To get back to think through math for a second, uh, just as an example uh, of something we can do, this is a company that we're in 41 states. We teach uh, over a couple million kids, two and a half million kids math. It's a math remediation tool. Um, it's essentially, to assist math teachers to just get better results for their students. Uh, in one of the case studies um, that we've done, we have uh, in Austin, Texas, an African-American population that really had you know, difficult scores. They improved 20% a year. A totally impoverished uh, population within Austin had a 10% improvement in a year. The average improvement nationwide, by the way, is about 30%. Think of that increase. In, in math test scores. Now, it costs 16 bucks a year. We're talking a few cups of coffee. Are your kids worth a few cups of coffee to have, and this is a third of the jobs in the country. If you can't get through pre-algebra, algebra, post-algebra, algebra, post supposedly are off the table. I mean, think of that statistic. I mean, do you wanna take that opportunity away from people that early in their life by not making an investment of that magnitude? I mean, to me, it just doesn't make any sense. And already this year, our kids have done over a half a billion math problems. And by the end of this school year, which is going to end in a two and a half months, they'll have done over a billion math problems. That's a lot of number crunching. That's a way to keep up with our international competitors so that we can have much, much more proficient uh, uh, scores going forward. So what I'd like us just to consider as a society is Let's get off the old school bus. Let's get off the old way of doing business. And let's shuttle as many of those kids over to the Ducks, where they can ride on a championship team in the parade, fulfill their potential, and have as much success in life uh, as, we can, as we can possibly give them. 
So thanks again. It was great to see all of you, and I wish all of you uh, luck later on in the day for the speakers.